welcome to the Becoming series. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Very honored to be here today. So excited, excited to have this conversation with you. Super, super excited on our end too. Thank you so much for availing yourself. Um, and our theme or topic today is career moves. So kind of how to, how to navigate yourself around a, a career, how to um, navigate through, you know, workplace issues and toxic environments. And I actually wanted to start off by asking you, how did you get into the career that you're in now? So, you know, kind of a, a short backstory of what you do, how you got there. And yeah. Yeah. So very interesting. I think, um, you know, a lot of people ask how you find your, your perfect kind of role. And I feel like I stumbled into it, right? Okay. Um, so so I, I studied uh, a BCom honors degree. I did industrial psychology. I did HR as well. Um, and I always knew that I wanted my role to be based on interacting with people and engaging with people. And in my head, I thought HR probably is the one area that you're not stuck behind a computer all day long. We actually engage with people. So that's as much as I knew, and that's why I studied HR. But then I think um, as I went along, I discovered what it is I love doing by just making sure that I, I kept myself open-minded. So I kind of started out as an administrator, doing some data capturing, and then I went into a little bit of recruitment um, and kind of enjoyed the recruitment scene. Um, and then things happened in such a way that I had to leave the role that I was in as I started to then move into Investec, which is one of the big kind of corporates I started in whilst I was still quite young. And in that, then found a path through running, not running, but as, as a coordinator in the graduate space, right? Yeah. And so they had a graduate recruitment program and I then started off my career in that. It's not something you learn about at university, like mm -hmm. at all. Uh, you know that, you know about recruitment, talent acquisition, that kind of thing, but you don't learn about the fact that it's a whole different strategy when you're trying to recruit graduates straight mm -hmm. from university. Okay. And so I fell in love with it. I, I fell in love with it from day one. I found it exciting. I found it energizing. Mm -hmm. I found it fulfilling. Okay. Um, and I immediately fell in love with that, right? So I found it very energizing. I found it hell of engaging as well. Very fulfilling because you, you kind of at the start of someone's career, uh, you help them kind of envision what they could become. You help open opportunities mm -hmm. for them to become that. And so I immediately fell in love with that. Okay. And after about three years, I tried to pivot out of it and, and do something different just so that I can expand my knowledge and my skill set, but very quickly realized that that stuff is great, but not as great as what I'm doing. And then that's how I kind of decided to stay in the path that I'm in now. Sure, so it's through discovery. Through discovery. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I like the point that you made about you wanting to pivot because that's something that I really want to discuss within this session. Um, so I just want to go into the mistakes. I think the biggest career mistakes that you think people make. So I think in terms of career mistakes, there's four key things that I think people do that really don't help them in terms of their career and career progression, right? Okay. And one of the first thing is that a lot of people don't set career goals, mm -hmm. right? So people go into roles just because they want to find a job, just because they want to earn yes. a salary. And you don't actually have a plan for what mm -hmm. it is you want to do. Mm -hmm. You don't say to yourself, okay, this is the reason I'm taking this particular role. Yes. This is how I want to grow. These are the skills that I want to attain. And so when you don't have that, mm -hmm. you'll find yourself kind of just doing the same role over and over, but there's no goal you're going for. There's nothing okay. you're reaching for. Okay. And I think that's a key mistake that people make. Mm -hmm. The second one for me is that a lot of young people try and specialize too early. Sure. I always try and say that keep your options open, right? Okay. So as much as you may come into a career thinking this is exactly what I want to do, but try out other things. You haven't tried out everything. You may yes. find that there's something else that you love more than what you think you, you want to do. Yes. And so always keep an open mind as you start in your career and try right. a lot of different things, right? Okay. So never allow yourself to become complacent in your job. 
um, and, and never allow yourself to just do a job because you want to pay the bills, right? Okay. Continuously challenge yourself and make sure that you are learning and growing okay. in your career. Yeah. Um, and that's number three. The fourth one is never let fear dictate your career, that's right? And, and what I mean by that is never stay stuck okay. in a role or a job that you don't love because you fear moving and pivoting into something that you do love. So good. Okay. So always okay. back yourself when it comes to that. Okay. Okay. That last point actually leads into our next question. How do you know when you should pivot? And what are the, the, the steps on how to even go about that? Mm. I think for me, pivoting, pivoting is really when you start realizing that you are in the wrong role right? You're in a job, you've been doing it for a while, it's not fulfilling anymore. And, and you find yourself feeling like you've got an interest in something else, and you've got a desire to learn a different skill to, to change careers into something that you'd love to do. So mm -hmm. I mentioned at some stage that I pivoted from, from what I was doing at Investec. And the way I was able to do that is, is firstly, I, I made sure that whatever it is I wanted to change into, how can I get exposed to that in the current space that I'm in, Ooh, right? Okay. So Very never be shy to see how you can volunteer your time okay. and, yeah. and assist in the areas that you would love to grow in. And that's what's going to help you gain exposure and experience and Brilliant. see whether that's something that really fits with you. Okay. And, and, and the next thing after that was that you know, it was important for me, once again, to my earlier point, never specialize early. So <laughs> as early as you can in your career, test out a lot of different things Brilliant. so that you don't feel the need to pivot five years in, 10 yeah. years in, right? Yeah. So people that want to pivot is because they started in something and they stayed there for as long as possible yes. and they didn't get exposure to other things. Yes. So the earlier you get exposure, the better. But if okay. you find yourself stuck in a role that you don't love, that mm -hmm. is not fulfilling, that mm -hmm. is not up that of your interest, then I think very important to start getting exposure to it. Brilliant. Start reading more about it. Start making sure you're getting exposure where you currently are yeah. and start putting yourself out there in the market as well. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and I think the next question also links to what you're saying about, you know, exploring and researching and figuring out if, if it's for you. So the next question would be, how does one choose the right career for themselves? Is there a thing as the right career? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. And, I, and, and some people, very small percentage of people know what they want to be and they actually stick it out and they're happy doing it. Mm -hmm. um, a large majority of us discover along the way, right? Yes. So a lot of us are either channeled because of our parents They'll kind of give us a steer and guidance around, this is what I think you should do. This is what's going to make you the most money. And there's always that battle between what's going to make me the most money and what's going to fulfill me, right? Yeah. And I yeah. think a lot of us go into that space of how can I make money quickly? What are the careers yes. that are going to help me make a success? Yes. And yes. then once you're doing that for long enough, you realize I don't feel fulfilled. Hmm. What fulfills me? What's actually interesting for me? Okay. And okay. that's where the pivot actually starts happening all the thoughts mm -hmm. around pivot mm -hmm. happening right mm -hmm. so so I think it's important to trust your gut as you're trying to find the perfect career for yourself okay. when something doesn't feel right where you currently are be brave be brave enough to explore that right don't okay. kind of dismiss it be like oh it's fine I'll just sit it out or whatever yes. be brave enough to explore that trust your gut and Trust, trust that you will discover your perfect career. If you feel like you're not in your right career, be mm -hmm. open to discovering it along the way. And okay. the best way to do that is to make sure to not to make sure that you get your hands into as much th as many okay. things as you can. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. one of the best ways to do that. All right, thank you for that that answer. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, very powerful points there. So, how does one? navigate a toxic work environment what are you know maybe even practical ways to just cope especially if you're in this environment because money is the main reason and I know you did say earlier that you know don't only stay for money but if right yeah. now you're in a dire situation and money is you're there for the money how can we you know equip ourselves to to manage in a toxic environment or with a difficult boss or manager yeah, sure. That, 
it's a good question because I think a lot of people potentially struggle with that. And, and what tends to happen is that people then become disgruntled but still stay where they yes. are. Yes. And, and that doesn't serve you in your career at all, right? Because, because it's just creating this vicious cycle between your relationship with your job, how you show up in your job. Mm -hmm. And then if your boss doesn't like you because you're showing up negatively, it then, you know, infuriates the boss and then, you know, and then it becomes this vicious cycle. And so yes. I think if you find yourself in that instance, one of the first things that are, are good for you to do, find yourself like-minded, positive people Ooh. in your organization, okay. right? Okay. But, but don't, don't spend time bitching and moaning. Sorry, probably bitching is not the word. <laughs> But don't spend your time. Don't spend your time complaining mm -hmm. and and surrounding yourself with gossip, right? Oh, yeah. Because that's not going to help you in terms of your state of mind. So make sure that you are always surrounding yourself with positive, like-minded people in your okay. organization, okay. so that it allows you to stay in a positive mindset. Secondly, okay. make sure that you find something that refreshes you outside yes. of your work environment, right? Brilliant. So Brilliant. if you need work. What do you love doing? Go mm -hmm. do something you love, doing, whether it's gymming, painting, swimming, whatever, whatever it is that you love doing, do a lot more of that. And okay. often okay. you need to balance out that negative energy that you mm -hmm. bring with you from work. You need to balance it out for your own mental wellness perspective. Mm -hmm. okay. um, one thing you must always remember is that your worth is not dependent on your job. Brilliant. Um, so but never allow your job to make you feel worthless. Brilliant. Right? So, so it's not about that. I think in, in many, I've had that experience where I've had a, a terrible boss mm -hmm. and, and that has a way of breaking your confidence. That has yes. a way of really um, eating into you so that even by the time you leave, you've, you don't even believe that you're worth anything. You don't even believe mm -hmm. that you've got that ability to do the things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. So never allow your worth to depend on your job in a toxic environment mm -hmm. always try to keep yourself busy and always do an excellent job at your at at your work mm -hmm. right so Brilliant. never allow the don't allow your work to become an issue over yes. and above the toxic environment yes does that make sense yes yes brilliant brilliant okay. thank you so um, much for that happy happy <laughs> awesome and then what do you think the best way to prepare for interviews is? Maybe a few like little tips and tricks um, for, for interviews. Yeah. Um, so for me, preparing for interviews is about researching, mm -hmm. rehearsing, and mm -hmm. reflecting. Okay. As you prepare for an interview, it's so important for you, the first thing is to research. Okay. understand the job that you're applying to inside and out yes understand the organization you're applying to okay. inside and out okay. you need to know things very well yeah the second thing is practice you know what some of the key um interview questions are going to be mm -hmm. practice them mm -hmm. go through it go through what your answers need to be rehearse it rehearse it speak through it speak through it and the, and why i say this is important is that on the day when you are filled with nerves, right? Yeah. The fact that you've rehearsed it, it will always prompt you into what it is you're supposed to be speaking about. If yeah. you haven't rehearsed, it, then you are nervous. You're now starting to think about what you want to say for the first time, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and that can help you because then everything gets muddled. You don't feel like you, you're speaking succinctly. Uh, you don't feel like you're making sense. You're like touching and going on all mm. the different aspects that you mm. think about. When you rehearse it, it almost acts as a trigger. Okay, I've said this off the back of this. I wanted to say this. I wanted to say that. So it helps from a nerves and a confidence perspective on the day. Okay. And then reflect. The reflect piece for me is always about asking yourself the right questions, right? Okay. So as you're preparing, ask yourself, why do I really want this job? Yeah. Yeah. What, what do I have to offer? What value am I going to add, right? Mm -hmm. So don't look at your job just for, I want to get the job. Look at it from a point of what am I giving? Why do I want Brilliant. it? And when Brilliant. you start asking yourself those questions, when they, when they ask you questions, interview questions that are maybe mm -hmm. not scripted, mm -hmm. you're able to 
then from memory know exactly how to answer those questions. Brilliant. So okay. Okay, research, mm -hmm. rehearse, mm -hmm. reflect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Three R's, love it, love it, love it. And then what are ways in which one can advance in their career? So I'm assuming career is almost the umbrella and then your job is, is an aspect of the career? I'm not sure if I'm right in it, you know, with, with that, but what are ways in which one can advance in, in their career? So, so a key way, um, you know, to advance in your career is firstly finding, finding the kind of career that you're passionate about. Mm. It's important that you love what mm. you do. Yeah. Um, it makes it that much easier to advance. And so important that you find what it is that you love doing because then you'll naturally spend a lot of time perfecting it and doing Great. well at it. Right? Okay. That's the first thing. Okay. The second thing, always ensure that you've got support. And by support, I mean, make sure you've got a coach. Yeah. Make sure you've got a mentor, right? Yeah. Careers are something you figure out on your own. There's people that have been Brilliant. there, that have done it, that have experienced mm -hmm. the things that you are experiencing that are challenges for you. And what better way to navigate challenges from the perspective of someone that's been through it, because that's mm -hmm. what's going to allow you to get through that challenge a lot quicker than trying yeah. to navigate it yourself. Yeah. So, so once you love what you do and you've got a coach and mentor that's helping you along the way. Yeah. Lastly, back to my previous answer, make sure you've got career goals and milestones that you want yes. to attain. Yes. Because that's how you can always measure yourself as to how far I am. That's yes. how you start at once. Yes. But if you don't know where you want to go, you won't advance, right? Yes. And yes, five brilliant. years in, you ask yourself, why? Wow. Where am I? Why am I still in the same role? Yeah. Well, what were your goals? What were your skills? Yeah. So, so always, always further yourself in what you love doing. Always mm -hmm. be willing to learn more about it. Okay. Make sure you've got someone helping you along the way in achieving those milestones as well. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, one of our last questions, I've got two, two questions left. So the next one is about the great resignation, this thing about the great resignation where people are resigning from their nine to five. So I wanted to find out what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that people should start off with the whole nine to five mentality or those that know that they were built for entrepreneurship? Do you think that they should just immediately like kind of go into that and feed that spirit or feed that baby? Yeah. Sure. So that's quite a complex question. And I think uh, it's twofold for me. So, so if you're young and you're a graduate, there is so much value to gain from being in a corporate structure, okay. right? And why I say this is because the fundamentals that you need to learn around managing yourself, managing your work, putting in the time that's required, you don't learn that if you haven't been in the discipline of doing it. Brilliant. So it's great if you're a yeah. If you're an entrepreneur straight out of university and you don't know what it takes to actually just be resilient through tough yeah. times, right? Yeah. Work teaches you that. Uh, you know, you don't know what it takes to, what is best practice? What are, yes. what, what are industries doing? What's the best yes. way to do any part of your job? You yes. learn it through being in corporate environments. So mm -hmm. I do think there's value in being in a corporate environment at least okay. for about years yeah very core cool skills that you're going to gain communication yes. working with other people dealing with difficult people Brilliant. because as okay. an entrepreneur you're gonna have difficult clients right yeah. you're gonna yeah. have to learn how to communicate with them and so if you're not in a space that makes you learn those things it's going to be tough for you even as yes. an entrepreneur yes but having said that there's a space for a nine to five and i think you know with this great resignation and what covid has brought about is the ability to look at your life holistically. And I think that's what I love about it, right? It's taken us away from being in the kind of rat race of just the cyclical every morning, this is what I do. You don't question what you do. Even yeah. if you're done work at two o'clock, you must still stay there until five o'clock. Like mm. there's so many things that it's now brought to light that's allowed yes. us to just reflect on yes. what's most important yes. in our lives and our careers and it's allowed so much more of a work life balance right okay so okay. i think the great resignation has been fantastic in breaking what was a nine to five and people working around the clock 
and allowed people time to reflect on what's most important for me, my family, mm -hmm. am I in the right job? Mm -hmm. uh, what else should I be doing? You know, it's yeah. allowed people to pivot from yeah. roles that they potentially didn't like and now they're yeah. able to do something else. And so I think it's been a fantastic, fantastic opportunity for us globally to just rethink what work actually means yeah and it's a lot a lot more work-life balance which is fantastic mm -hmm. and it's a lot, a lot a lot more entrepreneurship which is also great just from an e economy perspective right yes. Yes. Um, so so I think it's fantastic and I think it's really going to change the narrative of what work is mm -hmm. um and I really believe that those that know their purpose and those that know what they meant to be doing early mm. in their mm. careers, go for it. Learn yeah. along the way, make mistakes yeah. along the way, go into yeah. entrepreneurship. You don't have to do corporate in the long term. I do believe that corporate for two, three years will give you very important skills that are going to help you as an entrepreneur. Okay. But it's not a must. It's not a must at all. Um, okay. Yeah, that's, okay. that's my two steps. <laughs> Thank you so much. And my final question for today, for anyone out there that feels stuck in their career, whether old or young, but just kind of stuck either in a work environment or in a career that's not fulfilling, what are some words of advice or words of encouragement that you can, can leave us with today? Oh, man, I think... For me, if you're stuck in a career or you're stuck in a job that you don't love, spend time unpacking what you love, right? I think a lot of times we don't invest time in ourselves in terms of we do what people expect us to do, mm. but we don't sit with ourselves long enough to say, what do I love doing? Yeah. If I didn't have to, if I was a trust fund baby and I didn't need money, what would I do for a living, mm, right? And mm. how can I do that now, right? So, so start finding different ways, start engaging in things that fulfill you, even if it's part-time initially, start engaging in things that fulfill you after work, during the weekends, and start finding that space of creativity in yourself yeah. to then discover what it is you love. Yeah. And then brave. Brilliant. Be brave, back Be yourself. Brave. Um, life is about exploring, life is about living, life is about learning. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make the wrong decision because by realizing you made the wrong decision, you've learned something about yourself Yes, and it helps redirect you into a different yes. space. Yes. So, so go out there, be brave with your life and make sure that you, you are finding time to spend with yourself and understand who you are, what you love doing. That's what's going to help you make the steps towards something that you love doing. So I don't advise people to just resign. I know a lot of people that will just quit their jobs and sit at home because yeah. they're miserable. And I'm like, and then what is what is that solved? <laughs> yeah. Right now, yeah. you've your job. Now you don't have an income and you've got don't, bills to pay. Don't, don't do that. Don't do, do that. that to yourself. <laughs> transition. You must transition slowly out of it by finding more time with yourself, read books, mm. read books, educate mm. your mind, right? Mm. Personal development books. I don't mean like mm. stories and Harry Potter. And <laughs> I don't mean those kinds of books. I mean things that are really going to help you rediscover yourself and ask yourself some critical questions. So oh, I always good. recommend reading. Yeah. Okay. That's good. What's your favorite personal development book? Just by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I have so many that I, <laughs> that I absolutely, love and I think one of the key ones that was really fundamental for me was the choice okay um, oh, I thought I had it here I'll show it to you um but there's a book called the choice and that for me was very important in helping me realize that I've got a choice in everything yeah. in life yeah. right and sure. and through the journey of listening to to this woman I've now forgotten her name I'll find it for you just now but through the journey of listening to her and how she went um, through the Holocaust, um, you know, and how other people died around her and she survived and what it took to survive. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, it's just inspiring. Mm -hmm. And and that for me was something really motivated me to, to 
be more deliberate and intentional about my life and mm -hmm. what I want to do and know that the internal locus of control, right? It's yeah. not about what's happening to me, but it's about yeah. what am I allowing and what am I putting out there, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that for me was very important, but I do think there's, there's books around productivity, like Atomic Habits, okay. which is really a great yes. book to help you start developing those good uh, habits uh, that you want to develop. Um, and I'm currently reading a book uh, called essentialism, which is Ooh, which I've is heard great. about that one. Mm. Have you heard about it? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Fantastic book in in just helping you spend more time productively instead of a little bit of time on a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, and it's important yeah. because I think we run around doing so many different things, but we've got nothing to 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 like show for it at the yes. end of the day, right? Yes. So so yeah that those are some of the books that I absolutely love. Untamed is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Yeah, there's, there's a list. There's a list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so, so much for sharing. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your, your bombs of truth and bombs of wisdom and fire. Um, and I'm so grateful. I really Yay. do hope you have a beautiful, beautiful evening ahead. And thank you for thank joining you. us on the Becoming series. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity and yeah, lovely to be able to chat to you today. Hey there, gorgeous. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Becoming Series. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Like, share, repost and stay tuned. For more information on who we are, visit www.wearebecoming.co.za. You can also catch us on Instagram at becominginitiative underscore and on Facebook at We Are Becoming. Keep queening.